Good morning and welcome back to our Saturday Shores of Love. Today here I have me, Lucy, and Mommy. Today we're reading God Loves You by the band Steamy. And we'll do our usual story and then we'll talk about it after we're done. And today is also the birthday edition. Last week was Sophia's birthday. She didn't want to say it, but I'll say it because that's just how I am. All right. The first week of school was a busy time for brother and sister Bear. It was a time to see old friends, meet new teachers, get their first homework assignments. You would not be excited about that. No. My class doesn't do homework unless we didn't finish something. And sign up for after school activities. Sister decided to try out for the big school show. This year, it was the music bear. Sister thought she would be perfect in a leading role. She liked to sing, I feel pretty. From ba Bear Side Story at Home, Mama and Papa always said she had a very good voice. But there was a lot of other girls trying out for the show, too. Babs Bruno had a very fine voice, and there was Queenie McBear, of course. She thought she was the best singer in the entire school, and all her friends agreed with her. Brother Bear was trying out, too, but not for the school show. He wanted to be on the basketball team. He was pretty sure that he could make it. He'd been practicing dribbling and layups in the driveway at home. He'd played 21 with Papa after supper and always beat him. The tryouts for the school play and the basketball team were on the same day after school. Brother went down to the gym and got into the ba his basketball uniform, and the other boys changed into the charged onto the court and started warming up. Sister joined a long line of cubs in the auditorium. Teacher Jane called them up on the stage one by one to sing a song. Bab sang memories, and she was very good. But Queenie made a mess of tomorrow. She had a hard time hitting all the high notes. In spite of that, all of her friends clapped and cheered, and Queenie took a bow. Sister glanced over at Teacher Jane. She didn't look too impressed. When it was Sister's turn, she sang, I feel pretty, like she did at home for Mama and Papa. In the gym, Brother was puffing and panting away, trying hard to look good. One after another, the boys <clears throat> dribbled, passed, shot layups, and took foul shots while Coach Grismeyer looked on and checked off names on a clipboard. You couldn't tell anything by watching him. His face never changed. Never a smile, never a frown, not even a wink. The Cubs called him Old Stone Face. <laughs> What's Old Stone Face? What would you think that means? A face made out of stone. Old. Very serious face. He didn't show any emotion. There was none of that. That's emotion. That's what stone face would look like. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, he said, okay, man, that's enough. The roster will be posted on the bulletin board outside my office tomorrow. On his way back to the locker room, brother couldn't resist stopping to ask, Coach, do you think I have a shot at making the team? Coach Grismeyer just shrugged. We'll see. In the auditorium, the auditions for the school, pl school show were winding up. Teacher Jane smiled a lot more than Coach Grismeyer, but she wasn't giving away any information either. That's all for today, everyone. I'll post my choices for the entire cast, cast tomorrow on the bulletin board outside my room. As Sister left, she couldn't, stop, re she couldn't resist stopping to ask, Teacher Jane, do you think I have a chance of getting one of the main parts? We'll see, my dear. Sister joined with, bro up with brother as he walked home from school. Well, how do you think it went, asked sister. Do you think you made the team? Yeah, I think so, brother said hopefully. He really felt he had done well. He, he knew he was a little short to be playing on the school team, but he hoped his skills and his hustle would make up for that. What about you, brother asked. How did auditions go? Great, I think, said sister. What did teacher Jane think, brother asked. I don't know, said sister thoughtfully. She didn't say anything. She just smiled at everybody. At least she smiled, he said. Old Stoneface never smiles. Sister laughed as they reached their treehouse and climbed up the steps. Well, oh well, we'll find out how we did tomorrow. And they did. The next morning, brother and sister rushed downstairs, gobbled up their breakfast, waved a quick goodbye to Mama and Papa, and got to school as fast as they could. They couldn't wait to see how they had done. Brother rushed to Coach Grismeyer's office while sister scurried to Teacher Jane's room. There were crowds of cubs gathered around the bulletin boards, and brother and sister struggled to get up close. Brother glanced quickly down the list of names. There was his right at the bottom. At first, he felt a rush of relief, but then he noticed what it said next to him. Team manager? Team manager? Team manager? The team manager just picks up all the basketballs and made sure everybody got in the bus on time. That's not what he wanted to do. He wanted to play. He wanted to shoot and dribble and dunk. He wanted to be a 
big star. Crushed, he slunk down the hallway to his classroom. <clears throat> Outside of Teacher Jane's room, Sister quickly looked over the cast list. At first, she didn't see her name. At the bottom, she spotted it right at the bottom. Sister Bear, stage manager. Stage manager, stage manager. All the stage manager did was put away the props, make sure everybody got um, stage on time. She didn't want to be a stage manager. She wanted to act. She wanted to sing. She wanted to dance and take bows. She wanted to be a big star. Miserably, Sister trudged down the hall to the classroom. When school let out that afternoon, Brother and Sister Bear were both feeling very sorry for themselves. Even the weather seemed to be against them. Slowly, they climbed up the front steps of the treehouse. Wearily, they plopped themselves down on the sofa in the living room. It seemed like the dark rain clouds outside had followed them in. <sighs> Whatever is the matter, asked Mama. Yes, said Poppy. You both look like you were about to get your tooth drilled. <laughs> Brother and sister sighed. Oh, we had a rough day at school. I didn't make the basketball team. And I didn't get a part in the school show, said sister. Oh, dear, said Papa. What a shame. How disappointing, said Mama. Didn't Coach Grizzle Meyer or Teacher Jane give you anything to do at all? Well, said brother, they did give us something to do. I'm the team manager, and I'm the stage manager, said sister. But I don't want to do that. I want to be in the show, and I want to be on the team, said brother. Well, I said, Mama, I guess not everybody can be a star. But don't you think I deserve to be in the show, said sister? Of course you do, said Mama. You're a wonderful singer. And don't you think I deserve to be on the team? Of course you do, said Papa. You're a terrific basketball player. I guess nobody else does think so, said Sister Gloomily. I guess nobody at Bear Country School thinks much of us at all. She heaved an ever, even bigger sigh. Well, said Mama, if you're not going to do as any good sitting around here feeling sorry for ourselves, I was just about to go outside and cut some flowers. It's getting chilly at night, and I don't want them all out there. Be I want to get them all in before they fro before there's a frost. Why don't we all go out for a little walk? But it's raining. The rain stopped, said Papa, looking out the window. Sure enough, the clouds had lifted and the sun was peeking out. Papa got Honey Bear into her stroller and they all went outside. Mama stopped to cut some flowers at the back gate. They were beautiful. Big, bright yellow, orange, pink, and violet blossoms. Birds were coming out after the rain and singing in the trees. A big blue butterfly came sailing by and stopped to sip nectar from Mama's flowers. By now, the clouds had all rolled away and the golden sun was shining over the countryside. Look, said Papa, a rainbow. As the rays of the sun shone through the last drops of rain, a beautiful rainbow stretched right out across the sky. Wow, said Brother, it is so bright. What makes a rainbow, said, <clears throat> said Sister in wonder. Well, said Papa, you see, the light from the sun shines through the raindrops and creates a prismatic thingy, which bounces around from the, um, uh, Mama interrupted. The rainbow is a gift from God. It's a sign that the rain is past and the sun has come to warm the earth. God puts a rainbow in the sky as a beautiful sign of his love for all of the earth and all of the creatures that he has made. Even us, said brother. Of course, said Papa. God loves everybody. What about the wasps, asked sister. A wasp has stung her in the schoolyard a few days ago and she was very afraid of them. Well, yes, said Papa, shooing one away from the buzzing, buzzing around Mama's flowers. God loves all his creations. Does he love us even when we're bad, wondered, pa wondered Brother puzzled? Well, said Papa, what about when we're really, really bad? Like when Brother and I got into a fight and wouldn't speak to each other for a week. Do you think he still loves you when you're bad? You can be a brat sometimes, though. <laughs> um, said Papa, or that time Too Tall Grizzly and his gang dared me to steal Farmer Ben's watermelon, asked Brother. Uh, said Papa. Or when we watch too much TV, put in Sister. Or when I bite my nails. Or when we don't do our homework. Or, yes, Mama broke in suddenly. He does. They all looked at her in surprise. You see, she explained patiently. God wants us to be good, but he doesn't love us because we're good or bad. He loves us because he created us. Oh, said Sister. Like how you still love us even though we're not even when we do things we're not supposed to. That's right, said Papa. Of course we're disappointed when you misbehave, but we still love you. We even love you enough love you when you don't make the basketball team or get the part in the school play. And we're proud of you because your coach and teacher trusted you to be managers, special jobs for the most responsible cubs. Brother and sister smiled. They were beginning to feel slightly better about their problem. By now, 
They had made their way down the lane to a spot that overlooked Farmer Ben's farm. It was a lovely scene. The cows were coming in from pasture. The ducks were swimming in the pond. The bees were buzzing around their hives and the sun was setting behind the trees. As they grew darker, as the sky grew darker, they noticed a tiny point of light in the western sky. What's that, wondered brother? That's the evening star it comes out after sunset. Is that another sign of God's love, asked sister? It surely is. And hand in hand, the bear family turned home and returned home for their evening meal. So what do we think about that? Do you like that story? What are you about you, Lucy? Mm, yeah, I liked it. You liked it? So do you think that even when Sophia is being a little brat, sometimes God still loves her? Mm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we thank you for joining us Saturday Stories of Love. We will see you in a couple of weeks. Everybody stay warm. Bye.